Alright, we're good to go. We're good to go. It's the 23rd of July 1941 and the Admiralty are in panic. An RAF Spitfire reconnaissance plane has just returned with photographs of the Scharnhorst in La Rochelle, a French port on the Atlantic coast. On the other side of the Atlantic, 30,000 Canadian troops are getting ready to sail. Scharnhorst could wreak havoc on that convoy. It must be stopped. father used to bring me here as a child to watch the planes take off and land. In 1988 I started to learn to fly here but an accident while flying solo knocked my confidence and I stopped flying for over 30 years. At that time I had an instructor called Stan Greaves and I've only recently discovered the amazing history this guy had in World War II. Let me tell you his story. My old flying instructor Stan Greaves was awarded the Distinguished Flying Medal for his attack on the German battleship the Scharnhorst on July the 24th 1941. After an initial attack on the ship the Halifax bomber's bomb aimer was, came over the intercom saying he'd only released half of his uh, bomb load and, and Stan Asked the crew over the intercom, shall we go in again? Receiving a unanimous yes, he went back in for another um, bombing raid on the ship, this time causing it damage which would take the ship out of service for four months. After the second attack on the ship, the Halifax bomber that Stan was piloting was surrounded by nine ME109s and shot down. All the crew bailed out and Stan was the last one to bail out seconds before the plane exploded in the sky. All the crew were landed but they were captured and taken um, as POWs for the rest of the war. After the war Stan returned to his job in insurance. In the winter of 1969, after previously taking up flying light aircraft for pleasure, he decided to do a flying instructor's course and in July of 1970 he started training pilots up at the Yorkshire Aeroplane Club at Leeds Bradford Airport, which is where I met him. I, st I can still remember him coming um, in to land at Leeds Bradford Airport and him teaching me the correct way to crab in and he mentioned it was how the RAF had taught him. After the war Stan often wondered whether his crew were still alive and where they were. 
and he had an idea that if they were still alive, how great it would be to be able to fly them back to base. An ideal time would be 40 years to the day um, after the attack on the Scharnhorst. That day would be the 24th of July 1981. So he set about trying to find them. Over the next 12 months, Stan found and contacted all of his crew and they were still alive. Every one of them was enthusiastic about the plan to fly them all back to base. It would have been nice to fly in Halifax, but that was out of the question. But Stan, with working at the Yorkshire Aeroplane Club, the chap there offered to lend him an aircraft which should manage to get all the crew into. The plan was to fly from RAF Scampton up to RAF Linton on Ouz where they took off from 40 years ago. The morning when the crew all met together again was the 23rd of July 1981 and he said it was amazingly emotional. All of a sudden the years just fell away and they were just like young lads again, even though they were well middle aged men ranging up to 60 years old. The aircraft they were in was given special permission to use the same call sign as um, they had used 40 years ago. That was Halifax Lima 9512 uniform. As the aircraft approached Linton on Ouse, one of the crew suggested that they report to Linton control tower that they had four wounded on board, which would have been the case back in 1941. So they did this and that was acknowledged by the um, that by the tower which gave him permission to land on runway 28. He says as the wheels touched the ground, they felt such an enormous feeling of pride and gratitude at being able to complete the mission that they'd started exactly 40 years ago. Well done, Stan. <laughs>